If we're trying to determine in this case, does f of x have a local max or a local min at x equals 2? So we look at 2, and the first thing we could do is look at the first derivative, right? I mean, we could say, hey, by the first derivative test, um, we're looking kind of like an easy problem, right? It's changing from positive to a negative. So if the slope is changing from positive to a negative, we could say that we have a uh, relative max, right? A, or a local max at x equals 0. That makes sense, doesn't it? Right? OK, good. Um, but the problem here is, do we know what's happening right really, really close to the point? Like, negative 3 is kind of far away from 2, isn't it? Right? And 5 is kind of far away from 2. Right? So we won't really want to put too much money on that, because guys, if we know we have this you know, function here, and here's 2, and you know, we're going to negative 3 and 5, like, we know at 2, you know, it's equal to, like, we don't. We don't know really, even though we know the slope here you know, is positive and the slope here is negative, this could all change, right? It could actually go like this, and then it could be a local min, right? We don't really know. We don't just want to assume that it's a max or a min, because those are kind of far values away. It would be preferred you know, if maybe we had something like 1.99 and like uh, 2.01. That'd be a little bit easier for us to be able to kind of identify what is going on with the graph, right? Do you guys agree? If we know the slope like right next to it, but we kind of know the slope's like far away. And as we mentioned, we have no idea what's going on between negative 3 and 2. We have no idea what's going on between 2 and 5. We just know that the function is differentiable and continuous, correct? So the first derivative test is really not the best indication. Because by the first derivative test, we would definitely say that this is going to be a relative max. So why don't we look at the second derivative test? So first derivative test gives that. Second derivative test, we're going to look at f double prime of 2. And if we look at f double prime of 2, what do we get? 4, Four which means that's positive or negative? Positive. So if we have the second derivative as positive, that tells us our graph is going to be concave up. Therefore, it's a minimum, which is the opposite of the first derivative, what we thought by looking at the first derivative test, right? So that's why you have to be careful with this. Okay? Again, first derivative or second derivative work, but the problem with this is by this table, this is not like it's not a polynomial function where we could easily determine. Okay, this is actually works. So what we want to say is f time is greater than 0. How did I write that? And f prime of 2 is equal to 0, which means it is a critical point. right? Because remember, what, what do we really care about? It, the, only the only time the second derivative wor value works is if that is a critical value of your first derivative. Right? Remember how we did last exa first example we did today? We found the critical values first, and then we used those test points to plug them into the second derivative. So that doesn't work for either of these two. We can't check the concavity at x equals negative 3, because that's not a critical value. The first derivative is not equal to 0. We can't check the concavity here at 5. That's not a critical value. Okay? It has to be the critical values of the first derivative. 